If you're looking to create an order management system that handles incoming purchase orders, the status of orders, packing slips, signatures, and more, then check out the following mini series. I will go through the base setup, automation development, creation of interfaces, along with a fellow integration to receive signatures and other third-party information. Check this out. Welcome to our channel. My name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business processes and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, please visit our website below to book a free consult. In this video, we're going to begin building the base structure. We're going to start with the purchase orders, the purchase order line items, and the customers. In future videos, in part two and three, we are going to touch on things like the pack and slip, pack and slip line items, how to integrate with a tool like Fillout for signatures from a receiver if you're shipping the items. And we're also going to touch on the interfaces that is built right into Airtable so that it makes using this data and displaying this data much more simple. To begin, we want to create a new base from scratch. If you do not have an Airtable account, go ahead and create one. There is a link in the description below to get started. Once you've created a base from scratch, you can go in and start creating our tables. The first table that we want to create is, we'll just rename this as purchase orders, and we can create the other two tables to start. We'll call this our order line items, and we can create a customer table as well. So the first thing that we will do, we'll go into the purchase orders table, and we can start building out the fields that we will need for the purchase orders. One other thing I forgot to mention is in the top left corner here, we can rename the base. So we'll just call this order management. There's a few default fields that are created for you. You can go ahead and delete all these and we will create what we need from scratch. We will start adding the fields we will need. The first thing that we may need for a purchase order is an order number of some sort. You can just add the order number name and then you can add something like a single line text or if the order numbers are truly just numbers and not alphanumeric characters, uh, then you can go ahead and select the number. But I'll just select the single line text for now. So we got order number, put in order date, which just can be a date field. We can do customer, which will be a linked record to the customer table that we've already created. And one order will only link to one customer. We'll want to turn this off. And we can create that field. We may want an order status and things like pending, in process, complete might be the status that we want. And we can create a default option and I'll select pending. Any new order that you enter, it will have a default option as or status as pending. A few other things that we want is maybe the total amount. But what we'll do is we'll roll up all the line items to automatically calculate this for us because we have not yet built out the order of line items table i will just enter total amount as a single select field for the time being and then we can flip it to a roll up field once we have developed the order line items table something else we may want is a notes field type so that when you go ahead and enter the purchase order you may want to add some sort of context or extra information to it. We can select that as a long text field type. Something that I like to do across most of my tables is bring in the record ID that is specific to each record within the table. Often we need to use those across other tables and integrations. So I like to add that right from the start. So we can just call this record ID and we'll bring in a formula type. And if we just start typing record ID, it will populate here, close out parentheses and we'll create the field and it will show the specific record ID to this record. And the last thing that we will bring in is the remaining two ship. And you'll see how that works shortly. Again, because of an automatically calculated field, we will use a roll up field type. And because we do not have it created yet in line items, again, I will just set it up for a single line text for now. But basically what that's going to do is look at any line item and any number of items that have not yet been shipped and calculate that number for us so that when we're going through the interface, we can quickly see if there's items remaining within 
that purchase order. So this is a pretty good start for the purchase order table. And now we can move on to the order line items. And in a moment here, you'll see how things start linking together so we can pull data across each different table to display the information in some usable and friendly way. Go ahead and click into order line items and we can delete all of these default fields for the time being. And we could have done this step on the purchase orders as well, but I thought I would add it in on this side. We'll add a new field and we want to link to a purchase order. So we're going to click link to another record. We're going to link to the purchase orders and one line item will only link to one purchase order. We'll turn that off. We'll create the field and then I'll go back into purchase orders and you can see that it was created here as well because if it links one way, it has to link the other way in Airtable. And I'll just double click this to bring up the settings and you can see that we'll allow linking to multiple records. We will leave that on in this case because one purchase order can have multiple line items. We want to leave that turned on. Go back into order line items and when we can start building out the other information that we may want here. Something that we may want to do is bring in a lookup field. So we can either add a lookup field from here or we can just right click, add a lookup field and we'll bring in the customer name. And we'll double click to bring into the settings and we'll just limit to the last one item that probably isn't necessary, but I like to get into the habit of this because just in case there's multiple linkages, we will only want to bring in just one customer name to use across various settings. So a single line text we may want to add for item name, we'll want to add a status. So this could be a status for each line item. We'll have pending in process and complete. And again, we'll create the default as pending. And now every company, every organization is going to have slightly different workflows, different processes. So this is just a good way to get an understanding of how you can have uh, line items linked to purchase orders and have it flow right through into your packing slip status. There's going to be different types of intricacies of business that you need to set up and customize within a system like this. But this is a really good way to get started. Something else we may want is the number ordered or quantity ordered, and we'll set that as a number field. We'll want the unit price, so that can be a currency field type. We'll create a formula for total price, and we'll just take the quantity ordered and we'll multiply it by unit price. We create that field, and then I'll double click on it, go into formatting and select currency so that it formats it as a currency and then one other field type that we will need in part two of the series is a, a number ready or a number of parts ready or quantity ready whatever you want to name it so that when we set up our packing slip and packing slip align items tables that the information can be pulled across and we can do a few different automations and calculations accordingly and i will show you in another part of this video how to get started with that but for the time being we'll just add a number ready and we'll just add a, a number here so this will be like a quantity ready for this specific line item in within that purchase order now we'll move into customers again i will delete the first three here the purchase orders i do not want to delete this we have created this again by creating the linked to record field type within the purchase orders table. So we can delete these first three. We already have the link to the purchase orders here. Now I can add something like company name. It'd just be a single line text. We maybe want a contact me at that company, which is also going to be a single line text. We could add a contact email. It can be an email type. We maybe want a phone number. I'm also going to add things like a billing email, a billing address, and a shipping address. That way, if you want to integrate with something like QuickBooks, Xero, or some other accounting software, you can, depending on your specific workflow within your company. From this order management system, let's say your process is on a packing slip. Once it has been shipped, that's when you create your invoice you can automatically have it transfer that information to a QuickBooks or your accounting software. 
with the customer and all the purchase or line items within the invoice. That way you're only truly entering the data and information once into one system. And then you could also create things like PDFs of packing slips and have them emailed automatically to the company that you're shipping the items or products to. Quickly just add a billing email and then billing address and shipping address as well. This gives us a pretty good start for our purchase orders. We could add a purchase order. We can add our order line items and our customers to our purchase order. I'll quickly run through how to do that. And then in part two and part three of this video, I'll show you how to add the packing slip, packing slip line items. I'll show you how to integrate with something like fill out to be able to create the signature for the packing slips. And then in part three, I will add the interface so you can easily use and access this information in data across your entire organization. To get started here, I will just quickly add a order ID and I'll create this as a formula field type. This is the primary key. It's good to be able to create some sort of unique and easily identifiable key or string of text here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in a concatenate function. I'm going to add the order number and I will bring in the customer as well. And we should do this for the order line items. Again, you add a formula concatenate. In this case, I'm just going to bring in the purchase order and I'm going to bring in the item and then the customer, we can just, we could either add the company name here, but to keep it simple, what I'm going to do is again, bring in the formula. And in this case, I'm only going to bring in the company and on the order line item screen, I can rename this to line item ID. I'm going to delete all these default fields. And then we will go ahead and add one order so you can see how the information flows across. The first thing that we're going to have to do is add a customer. So we'll just add sample customer. I'm going to leave the addresses blank for the time being. And then we can go in and add a purchase order, an order number. We'll add the order date as today. We'll select the only company that we have or customer that we have. Leave it as the status as pending the total amount. This is something else that we need to do. If we right click on it, we'll edit the field. We'll do a roll up and we're going to select the order line items and we're going to roll up the total price, which added the formula by default for us as sum. And it's going to sum up all of the linked records in the order line items. He will, if we wanted to add notes, we could, but I'm going to leave that blank. And the remaining to ship, we are going to leave that blank for the time being, because we will not be able to use that until we create the packing slip and packing slip line items tables. Now I'll move across to the order line items and we'll just add one line item here. We need to link to the purchase order I just created. We can just label this, whatever we want. We'll say that we've ordered 10 at a price of a hundred per unit. You can see it calculated to a thousand for us and we'll leave the number ready because that's not relevant yet until we create the packing slip and packing slip line items tables. And I'll go back to purchase orders and we can see here that it has rolled up the total for us. This has just one line item to it, but if we add multiple, it will create the sum or calculate the sum for us. This would require you to click through various contacts and different tables to be able to add line items and be able to add purchase orders, which isn't ideal. That's why in part three of this video will become very valuable because we'll create an interface where from basically just one context or just one menu, we'll be able to add all the information that we need for the purchase order. And then within a few clicks, after we create the automations, it will move it into the packing slip status. But first we have to get the base set up and designed to work efficiently in that way. I'm going to cut things off here. That's going to be it for this video in part two and part three. I will add the packing slips, the integration with fill out. We'll create the automations and we will also create the interfaces so it can work efficiently for you. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check out parts two and three as they are released in the next coming weeks. And if you enjoyed it, please hit that subscribe button so you're notified of part two and part three when they come out.